Good evening, everybody. Merry Christmas. Uh, I'll bring this uh, meeting to order for uh, December the 19th, 2023. It's about to say July. Uh, number two, the adoption of the agenda. You gotta make the motion first. Oh, okay, I have to do that, okay. Result of the amended agenda for December the 19th, 2023, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Boycha. Go ahead. Well, I'd like to add two items to the agenda this evening. Uh, first one would be a resolution uh, to allow uh, administration to make preparations to uh, proceed with the procurement of a design project manager for the arena. And we can discuss that more later on. And then a second uh, uh, requirement or resolution is required to formally accept Dominga Campana as our youth council for this evening. Okay, so we have this as an amended agenda. All in favor? It's carried. Number three, result of the minutes of the December the 5th, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor uh, Powell. All in favor? It's carried. Those two items that were added are in there, right? Uh, they aren't yet. I oh, you're adding them. Okay, just let me know when. They're going to appear where? Uh, new business. Okay. Okay, so 6, 6.1. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinarian Service District budget for 2024 be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Uh, what does the budget compare to you, like from the last year before? It's the same thing. Same thing, thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 6.2 Result of the letter from the Honorable Ian Bushy, Minister of Municipal and Northern Relations, dated December the 6th, 2023, regarding Mobility Disadvantaged Transportation Program 2023 Interim Operating Grant be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? Uh, just to point out that, uh, well, in combination with this letter and uh, the AMMs, they did indicate that the provincial government considers our handy transit and transportation services for seniors and other members of the community of importance and connected to meeting those health objectives. So just a reminder that I would like to see the handy van come to our cow agenda for further discussion to ensure we're utilizing it to the best of our abilities in that area. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carry. 6.3 Resolved that the letter of relationship from Ecrostrat with regards to establishing biomass supply chains uh, projects be acknowledged and received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? What is, if any, the bottom line cost for the town of Swan River in regards to this? Uh, it is a federal grant that is covered, it's 100% grant. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.4. Result of the building and demolition permits 6723 through 6923 with a total estimated value of $1,205,000 be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell, discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 6.5. Result of the request letter of support from the Northwest Regional Immigrant Service Incorporated be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. 
discussion? Councilor Edward, and then Councilor White. Um, in the documentation provided, it mentions that there was a letter attached, but I did not see it, and that was in the uh, NWRIS request letter for support. They said they attached with their letter, but it wasn't included in our documentation. And do we need a resolution to provide a support letter, letter in response to their letter? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they did not have an attached letter. The letter of support was our letter of support for the same grant funding in 2020. I just didn't attach it. So we'll, we will write a similar letter of support if we choose to support And that will come later as a resolution. Council White. No, this, uh, this particular entity, like most, is uh, integral to our community. I uh, wholeheartedly uh, support them. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.6. .6. that the letter from the Swan River and District Community Resource Council be received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Boycha. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. Snow clearing is another one I've requested to come to a cow agenda, and I would like for a response letter to include a date in which that will be on the cow agenda. So, should anyone from the board wish to attend that particular cow meeting and hear or observe the discussion regarding snow clearing, they would know when to attend. We don't know when that meeting will be yet, so we. If we choose, we can always let them know when we are going to have that. But this letter is intended to go out as soon as possible. Yes, we would like to respond. Okay. For the discussion, Council White. Yeah, the uh, CAO wrote a letter of uh, a reply to them explaining all that stuff. And if they wanted to come, they were going to I thought you'd cover that quite well enough. Okay, for the discussion, Councilor Bobbick. Well, uh, shouldn't this letter be going to MIT at the time since it's their street that they're helping work in? Um, that's a good point. Uh, I guess we could also let them know that they should reach out to MIT as well, or MI. Can we add that to that letter? Uh, we can, yeah. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I'd like some clarification. Just as to like the extent of the snow clearing, does snow clearing also include um, ice removal on sidewalks, or is that just literal snow from roads? Uh, so there's <coughs> go ahead. Uh, so there's plowing of the streets to get the streets passable, mm -hmm. and then we have to haul the snow away when it accumulates. So last year we hauled much away, or we had to push it further back up the uh, boulevards because every time we plow. The street gets narrower and narrower because yeah. we're pushing up against the existing ridge. And then for on the sidewalks, uh, the commercial businesses have to do around theirs. We do residential. And so we have a trackless tractor that drives down the sidewalks and it snow blows or it has a sweeper depending on the type of snow. Uh, but if it does get icy, then it has uh, sand that can drop out. Okay. And so we cover the ice with sand to make it possible. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, reports. 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor uh, Powell, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Councilor White. Uh, I'm just uh, a bit of a quandary why we have having trouble get that EMF report. Because uh, yeah, I have be. three or four commitments. And, uh, and then, uh, apparently there's a lot more to it than we know, but I think the onus falls on you, sir, to tell us that. Yeah, that should, be coming, this time? that should be coming at the end of this week. End of this week? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good luck for me. I'll just remind everybody uh, that uh, just to speak up a little bit more because I don't think everybody in the back can hear, so please speak up. For the discussion, <laughs> all in favor? It's carried. Uh, 7.2. Result of the report for recreation be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. 
Discussion? Councilor White. Yeah, it was a good report. Thank you for that. Uh, the only query I had relative to purchasing out of the community, uh, uh, to heck was it, uh, you would not do that with your team unless significantly higher cost locally. I'm not sure what that means. Some things are specialty items that we have to order that are not available locally. No problem with that whatsoever. The second part of that sentence that you would not buy elsewhere unless it was significantly higher. Is that 10% higher? Is that 20%? There should be a number in there. We, we do not have a policy, so this is a directive coming down from admin. So we don't we don't have we don't have that. So we we are going to play it by ear. We're, we don't have a written policy for for managers to direct people to hire locally, and there is no threshold. We're just telling them that we want to see less Amazon purchases. But council council just has to know that we increase our material budget. So recreation must increase their material budget if we're going to do that. So if that's written saying that we have to buy it locally, just expect the the material budget to go up in all recreation accounts. Councillor Boychuk. I just have a question to that. Like have we reached out to the local businesses to match that or because I'm sure that we, they would. We have in the past, and they're giving us the best deal they can. Okay. And we purchase as much as we can locally. We, we really do. But at the end of a budget, we're trying to stretch it out to not go over. So they were a little bit higher. We're going to do the same thing in January, go around all of our businesses, and see what those best prices are, and, and um, spread it around best we can, or decide to go with the lowest price of a local business. Yeah, as long as those local businesses are being reached out to, I they don't want to just been. go to Amazon first and, and not. No, no, they have been all along, yeah. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, uh, Council reports. Councilor Bob, you get to go first tonight. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just to report that I was at a watershed conference in Brandon. Uh, just some of the things that come up. There's lots of scientific stuff that went over. It's actually a pretty good conference all around. So just to, uh, watersheds have changed a bit over the last couple of years here because of a couple of different programs. Uh, just some of the things like water retention, uh, uh, the pr conservation of uh, wetlands and stuff like that. These are nature's kidneys. This is what cleans the water. This is what replenishes the groundwater. You have to keep that in mind that everything that is done towards that is very important. So Manitoba watersheds and Saskatchewan watersheds are now handling about $40 million a year. So with that, locally we have $1.6 million that is coming into the economy through the, the watershed. So some of this is a Prairie Watershed Climate Program, which is a nitrogen program, which uh, goes to nitrogen management, uh, rotation of grain and cover crop. We also have a growth program that protects wetlands, forest areas, we're preparing areas. So we've got very busy over the next couple of years, the last couple of years. So like in 2022, we uh, with the Prairie uh, Climate Plan, there was uh, $560,000. Uh, this year was $570,000. They're growing every year. So these are 10 year programs. So if you add that up, there's going to be a lot of money coming to the valley. So just with that, I had uh, two meetings with, uh, in regards to Dr. Richards' estate, call meeting uh, December 12th. I'd like to comment on the sanding and uh, stuff. I thought the guys did a great job. They went to the thing to council needs to know that the sanding truck broke down 12 o'clock in the afternoon, got the parts ordered, it was going up by 12 again the next day. The trackless, it was out and we spoke about doing the streets and they're doing as many as they can. It makes a big difference to get that sand down before this little bit of snow right now. It's made a big difference in what they can get done. Also, just to mention, the tractor what we bought in this spring, was it we picked up that utility tractor? Was it last fall? Oh, last fall. Anyway, it was key into the sanding getting done faster because now all the other units are out doing stuff with the snow, not them sitting in the yard. The truck comes back, gets lower, and out he goes. So it made it really efficient. But again, hats off to those guys for fixing that. That was a water pump on that truck. It's not an easy job. 
it wasn't down to 12 hours, so both parts of it got very well done. So, I'll send them a thank you. And that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Boychuk. Um, so, we attended the December 12th Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, December 14th, attended a fire board meeting, which I'm sure Deputy Mayor Morio will speak more to. I'd uh, just like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all our Swan Valley residents um, and pass along our sincere condolences to the Acton City family. Ray was a huge advocate for recreation in our community and his presence at our events will be truly missed. Um, another thing I'd like to uh, commend uh, as well as uh, Councillor Bobbick, the, the sanding and, and the ice as I mean the public works people took best care that they could i mean we were basically covered in a sheet of it so it was it was not fun for a little bit there and then i'd also like to commend the arena staff uh, we were there over the weekend a few weekends in a row and i have to say they've done a phenomenal job in keeping keeping it clean and and everything running tip top down there while it's being utilized and that's it for me okay just to remind the council that to stick your reports, you do have the member's privilege at the end. Deputy Mayor Memorial. Uh, for me, um, as Bruce reported, there was a couple of meetings uh, regarding the Dr. Uh, Rich's estate. Uh, December 12th, we had the Committee of the Whole meeting, and as you'll see, a large part of that meeting was uh, delegated to the review of the Maintain and Regulate property bylaw, which will be coming up for second meeting here shortly. Uh, the 13th uh, was the Community Safety and Wellbeing Project kickoff meeting with uh, myself and Mr. Poole, um, where uh, some work plans was uh, presented and I guess tasks regarding data collection uh, to forward off to the, uh, the group uh, has begun. Uh, December 14th, uh, Mr. Poole, Councilor White, and myself, we uh, attended the RCMP D, D Division uh, MPSA, or Municipal Policing Services Agreement uh, uh, webinar uh, question and answer, where um, specialists from RCMP Division uh, went through the MPSA agreement article by article, line by line, and explained what those meant and uh, how to interpret it, along with uh, a detailed explanation of how to interpret that Greek invoice that they send us quarterly um, and how to uh, interpret it which once you get those key indicators of how they present it the light bulb goes off and everything makes sense uh, so um, I requested that uh, RCP D division again redo that presentation um, without all the question and answers and interruptions so that it can be put on the AMM website for future, future uh, viewing by all councils and future councils and administration so that uh, people can actually understand what the requirements are and what's the obligations under the MPSA agreement and how to interpret the invoice. Um, on the 14th in the evening, uh, Council Boychuk, myself, uh, we attended uh, one of the fire board meeting where uh, approval was given to uh, complete and sign a contract with uh, Mr. Uh, Darren Fedorchuk as the chief of the Swan Valley Fire Department. So congratulations to uh, Mr. Fedorchuk for uh, being the most appropriate uh, candidate selected uh, through that competition for the fire chief position for us. So, uh, so immediately after that he was tasked with a lot of administrative type duties uh, as secretary to the board along with myself and other uh, members to uh, proceed with the tasks of setting up a new entity um, regarding pay benefits administration bank accounts and whatnot so that's a whirlwind exercise that's going on right now um, last week uh, few members of council attended the public works uh, Xmas uh, Christmas lunch at lunchtime very well gained a few pounds that day uh, had a quick chat with uh, the workers that were there uh, it was appreciated that there was members of council that were able to attend uh, for that event uh, to show that uh, there's still the linkage between us and them where we're not strangers at the other end of the table for that and 
amongst all the other times, basically catching up on meeting notes, typing up minutes and action items from previous meetings and whatnot, trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel, which is still very long. <laughs> and that's all I got. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Council Paul. Okay. I guess we've pretty much gone through. We've all attended the Cal meeting here. Um, we've, uh, with the library, we've had um, a couple meetings there. Um, lots of things going on there. With um, just looking over policies from um, previous and kind of starting to work on that with, with the board all together. Um, we uh, also attended a interagency meeting, um, a Swan Valley interagency meeting, which was a, a great turnout from all service providers. And uh, yeah, that's all right for me. Thank you. Councillor White. Yeah, busy, busy times as usual. The call meeting is uh, always interesting and I appreciate having those relatively informal meetings with our team. I want to thank uh, Darren Harvey and his team uh, for organizing that public works luncheon. And I uh, echo uh, Councillor Morio's comments about it's important for all of our team to be together now and then. There was a little bit of food left after uh, Councillor Bob had put through, not much, but a little. Then the municipal police services meeting with, uh, with Mr. Poole and Mr. Morrow and Mr. Bobbick and myself. And I compliment you, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, because uh, you asked the, the chief to send that report to his officers. Because we were doing it from a municipal perspective, but uh, somehow there was a concern that maybe the officers didn't know that either. So I thought that was a great, great suggestion. So three good meetings, and I'll talk about the rest later. Okay. Uh, Councilor Manway. <coughs> I attended uh, the Community Safety Wellbeing uh, Community of Practice on December 6th and uh, December 8th and 11th. I was busy with uh, Communities That Care doing our first pickup of gifts and toys that were donated and starting to get those wrapped. Uh, December 12th was the Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, December 19th, um, which is today, uh, we just had a board meeting with services to seniors. So um, once again, one of the big topics there was um, handy van and how we can work with the town of Swan River to get some sort of a shuttle service for our seniors going so that they can get out and about within the community a little more um, often and with more ease. And I was in Thompson for a stretch there, so I wasn't able to attend the initial one-on-one -on -one, um, CSWB meeting on December 13th. Uh, my reception while driving wasn't the greatest. And I also missed the Division D meeting on December 14th and had to send my regards to uh, Director Harvey there to pass on to the Public Works staff because I was not able to attend that much either. And uh, I am now on the steering committee for the, uh, along with Councillor Powell, for the Community Safety Wellbeing Project. So I have upcoming meetings in early January starting for that bi weekly. So there's going to be a lot there. Okay. That's everybody. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> Not much more that I have to add to the group. Uh, just a reminder that we do have um, minister meetings this week, uh, one tomorrow, and my minister, uh, Naylor, uh, 4 o'clock uh, tomorrow afternoon. And then we'll also be meeting with the justice minister, uh, Matt Weep, on uh, Thursday morning. Uh, we'll have more, a little bit of discussion, but I think we already have our plans kind of set up for that as well. And uh, another just kind of a sidebar, we seen an announcement from the province last week to do with you know, if it's homeless shelter or information on, on sheltering uh, those of need. And so there was kind of a surprise to us, but uh, uh, we do have a, a meeting set up with um, Mr. James Wigley from Mental Health to discuss some of these items so that we can get some more insight about uh, if it's rumor or what, so that we have more information to the public. And that's gonna be coming up next week, so we have a committee also uh, working with that. Uh, for next week. Go ahead. Just a question. Uh, tomorrow is at 3.15 right here? Uh, 4 o'clock, I believe it said. What am I wrong? It's 3.15 in the report. 
Okay. And on the Thursday is 10 a.m. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll let you, if you have anything, um, youth member, even though we do have you haven't signed in yet, but I'll let you go anyways if you have anything that you want to add to our discussion at all. If not, if you're not prepared, then we'll catch you on the next one. Um, no, I, I, I think I'm just fine. Just listening to everybody else. Okay, very good. Uh, moving on to the CEO's report. I have a written report for council. If there's any questions, I can take those. Uh, just some highlights. I met with group health for comparison to the AMM uh, benefits package. We'll be meeting again next week. So we'll be providing council with some information on those costs which are upcoming. Uh, just a reminder to council, budget presentation at the Cal meeting January 9th. <clears throat> and uh, I'm still preparing notice for the crime strategies that we've been doing. That, that is still on the plate. Just need to get there so we can send it to, to the public. And yeah, just in regard to the added uh, resolution, just looking for direction on the preparation for, for hiring project manager for the Okay. Uh, Councillor Medwood. I have a question on your unfinished business. It says presentation of the art piece to SCN during upcoming municipal service agreement signing. It's been basically saying the same thing for quite a long time. So when exactly does the municipal service agreement signing take place? Uh, whenever they're ready. If they're not ready to sign, then they won't sign. We're waiting for them. Is it possible to do them separately? And uh, we we asked I'm, the I'm chief, and it was his wish to, to do those together. Okay. And that, that was going to be in one of my other reports later on that I did speak with the chief the other day. Go ahead, Councilor Paul. Um, just in regards to the phone system, just a little bit of information on that. Is that for here? Yeah, yeah. our call it central computer broke down so we have to replace that and uh, we did look at going we basically looked at revamping the entire town into its own network but the cost it was just cost prohibitive and uh, we looked at going to a cloud system but uh, again cost prohibitive with our budget so we, we are replacing or sorry repairing our unit and uh, and we'll get our answering services back. So right now we have no voicemail, no messaging. Everything is being answered by the front office staff and uh, then directed from there. Just, just as I know, I've had so many people so happy when someone oh. answers the phone here. <laughs> like it's been, and honestly, there was one time when I answered the phone and went, oh my gosh, hello. Like I was just like, there's somebody that answered the phone. It's just that I've had lots of people mention that, so. Yeah. Good to know. Maybe leave the computer broken then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything further? Council White. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you explained it because my viewers are just starting to work. This Clean Fuels Fund, and we've got $92,500 in their pending contribution agreement by whom? Uh, that's with EcoStrat. So they're the company that uh, assisted us in getting a grant from the federal government for giving uh, the town of Swan River a BDO rating. So for, for, it's for economic development purposes for someone who's looking to produce or produce biomass, oh, biomass production idea? using... Where are we with those guys? Well, then that's, that's different. That, this, is, this is the study for the, you know, the, the rating of the Swan Valley for biomass production. That other thing you're talking about is a specific company looking to actually produce it. So that it, it's with them right now. Apparently, they're in development. Yeah. That answers that. You met with the legacy committee. Is it Brad Madison? Yeah, today. Or how'd that go? Uh, well, he apologizes. He apologizes to all of us, but uh, we we will not see a draft until early to mid January. So he is. He was in court, and he is up to his eyeballs in crisis mode, I guess you call it, for year-end. 
projects and we will not see a draft agreement until the end of June. Okay. Go ahead. So where does that where does that put us with our legacy team? Uh well the agreement is really the guardrails for how the town and the agent operate. It, it's not. It doesn't. It's not going to do anything. Like once we have an agreement, it's not like we're started. We're not started until someone's willing to do the work. We've been told that they are not. And we, we we can't do capacity issues. So until we hire a project manager and get that started. So the resolutions tonight is for me to get started on the process, which means job description, uh, preparing to advertise, uh, drafting the contract agreement. Just doing that work, and then once that's done, uh, we can we can we can advertise and go through with that. But when when it's hired, uh, we don't have a resolution to actually hire that person, and that's when the clock. So you know, council should expect a, a report with, with that of where the whole project is, where what's coming in the future, because you know, once we start. Okay. I just wanted to confirm that meeting tomorrow with MTI Minister, um, if it's 315 or 345, because it's calendar one and this report another, so I should make an email. I, I do see that. It, it also says 315. I have 315 MTI Minister. 315. But in the calendar there tomorrow, it says 315, but then in the side it's 345. Mine, the mine comes up as 345. Can we, we can contact yeah, the we'll office to tomorrow morning? Confirm that. They sent out an email changing the time to 315. It was originally booked for 345, and they sent out an email changing it to 315. So just maybe contact the office just to get yeah, confirmation on that. Confirm that yeah. All right, new business. 8.1 Resolved that Domingo Campana be appointed as youth council member for the town of Swan River as described in the organizational bylaw. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Um, go ahead. Um, where are we seeing the agenda item? Uh, oh, you got to refresh. Yes, sorry, refresh your. Sorry, I should have told you all to do I that. I added the amended uh, resolution. Further discussion? Oh, Councilor Bobbitt. Welcome. Thank you. Hope you enjoy yourself. Councilor White. I'm hoping that we make sure that the key, the key pad numbers, because she's standing outside to just share very well. I think we're here a lot. Councilor White, we have a crew with Councilor Bobbitt. Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, well, I'll get you that. We'll do this formal part. Do <laughs> you, Domingo Campama, to solemnly affirm that you are a Canadian citizen residing in the province of Manitoba and that you will act faithfully in the office of the town of Swan River without fear, favor, or affection, and will truthfully, truly, faithfully, and impartially, and to, spe and to the best of your ability, execute the responsibilities bestowed upon you. I affirm. Congratulations. Good job. <laughs> it's been a long time since we had a youth council member. I think that the last one we had was in my first term as uh, council in 2010, so welcome. Uh, why, why did it take so long to get another one? Sorry? Why did it take so long to get another one? Uh, Nobody wanted to volunteer. <laughs> so you're going to trailblaze a little bit for us. 8.2 resulted the chief administrative officer accept and sign the contract of the town of Swan River, uh, meeting video services for the year 2024 from Mountain Dweller Media. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. 
Discussion? All in favor? Let's carry. 8.3. Result that the Chief Administrative Office sign the Municipal Cleaning Contract with Moonlight Cleaners as per Schedule A. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. I'm just noticing we have a typo in the word cleaning. Yeah, I've just changed it. Thank you. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Let's carry. 8.4. Result of the policy re regulating the submissions and administration administration of indemnity forms for council be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion. Councillor White, then Councillor Bobbitt. I think I think I interpreted it right. So if we have a meeting on December the twenty fourth, December the twenty second, we don't have to, in the month is it? We don't have to do it till a month after that, January the twenty second. Uh, well, it's okay to me. And I have no problem either way, by the way. Yes, the following month. The following month. So, so right. I, January the 5th and February, March, February. Yep. You got it. Yep, thank you. Uh, Councilor uh Just with this indemnity, I'll probably be voting against this motion. I just think if we're making a simple thing complicated here. If Council wants to get paid more, step up to your plate and say you want to get paid more. That could be. This is a whole bunch of work for to keep track of all this. Like, how are we going to do this? It's just paperwork on top of paperwork. If council wants a little bit more money, put it on the table. Okay. Uh, who is next? Council Medwood? Already been answered. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I agree with uh, Council Bobbick. Um, it's like, at the end of the day, it's going to be the same value because so it's just save the administrative headache and just. Put it on our monthly per diems. We all put in the time and effort that we are there doing it. Uh, I don't think there's any question with that. Uh, just, I, to me, just that. Change the amenities on the monthly thing and stop the, the monthly headache. And then we won't have administration chasing or reminding individuals uh, for it. So that's my thoughts. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.5. Resolve, resolve the administration proceed with pre preparations to advertise for design project manager for the new arena project. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, just as Mr. Poole had reported in his report um, and gave us a, a little bit of a focus on that that since there's a delay in the uh, agreement but there's nothing stopping us with uh, giving administration the authority to do some of the background uh, work with developing job description and um, and whatnot in preparation of getting this thing uh, proceeded and keeping it on the rails moving forward instead of another stall uh, and waiting for documents that could be mid-January and whatnot so um, I think we should just uh, give the administration the authority to proceed uh, with the preparation of this position and when they're ready they can come back with the resolution to hire should it reach that point but at least uh, keep the ball rolling and uh, proceed with this okay councillor uh, Edward. uh two questions one just to clarify that we're only doing preparatory work we're not approving actual uh, proceedings to commence hiring or posting and two uh, in regards to time is this going to detract from ability to maintain regular services of, of course there's there's already so much on the on the plate it's deciding what not to do as opposed to what to do so but to answer your question, no, we will not be actually advertising. Council can have that green light. This is just to draft the employment agreement, job description, uh, and the advertisement for that when we decide to do that. Okay. 
for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.1. Resolve the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 31033 to number 31092, totaling 132,131 and 44 cents as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5393 to number 5396, totaling 123,469 and 90 cents as listed on Schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number 5397 to 5399, totaling $16,606.64 as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposit payments totaling $29,344.66 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I see there are two on Schedule A, uh, number 31. 043 and number 31064, both are for Northern Lights. One is for $808.10 and one is for 17518. Um, what are those in relation to? I do not recall. Uh, if CFO Ganita, if we give him a few minutes, I'm sure he'll put his hand up when he, when he can search, but I will have to get back to you if not. Because are they both for window cleaning? I'll have to get back to you with the details of the checks. And my other one is for Clover Veterinary Care. Uh, yeah, that is the, the process which we unofficially started sort of a test case in turn, uh, for uh, alternative animal control processes. So is that for Town services is that for euthanizing? That one was for pound services. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Bobbick. 31073 OS and S Parkland Waste. So I'm having this is a recycling is $49,729.08. Is that per month? Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Okay. Thank you. For the discussion, all in favor, opposed, it's carried. 10.2. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached schedule, A totaling $2,393.69, therefore be resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on schedule A be added to the corresponding, pro sorry, mm -mm, corresponding property tax roll and collected in that manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective January 1st, 2024. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Whereas sections 163 of the Municipal Act provides that a council may adopt an interim operating budget to, to have effect only until the council adopts the operating budget for the fiscal year. Now therefore be it resolved that the following interim operating budget be adopted for the year 2024. General operating requirements, general government services, 800,000. Protective services, 1.8 million. Transportation services, 1 million. Environmental Health Services, $1 million. Public Health and Welfare Services, $150,000. Regional Planning and Development, $40,000. Resource Conservation and Industrial Development, $50,000. Recreational Cultural Services, $1 million. And Water and Service Services, $1.3 million. Moved by 
Council Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion, Council Medwood. The interim budget has to get us through until we pass the budget in, that's in June. Yeah, this allows us to carry on. Yeah, but it's roughly June when we pass it, or May? Oh, or? Well, yeah, hopefully the it's May 15th. May 15th? Yeah. Okay, and is this enough money allocated to each of these areas to get us through to May 15th? Yes. Okay, thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried 10.4. Whereas the 2023 financial plan for the utility operating fund included $98,565 transferred to the utility reserve, be it hereby resolved that the lesser of the $98,565 or the utility operating fund net operating surplus for the 2023 fiscal year be transferred from the utility operating fund to the water and sewer reserve fund once the 2023 fiscal year ended and has been completed. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Why are we doing the lesser of uh, if we had intended to move $98,565 to the reserve fund? Why are we doing the lesser of between that amount and Be the Because it's not completed yet, but go ahead. Yeah, because if the surplus doesn't equal that, if the so surplus is less than that, then we don't have that money to move. That's why it's the lesser of. If there's a surplus of less than that, then we'll move that amount. So this is basically based solely on surplus then? It's not something that we had said we're earmarking $98,565 for the reserve? Uh, no, it's just once you go through and do all the revenues and the expenses with the budget, so that's what it uh, transferring. So it wasn't for going to specifically transfer okay. this Okay, thank you for clarifying. For the discussion, all in favor, it's carried 10.5. Whereas the town deems it advisable to use any surplus in the general operating fund to stabilize property tax increases in future years, be it resolved that the amount equal to the general operating fund surplus for the 2023 fiscal year be transferred to the tax stabilization reserve once the 2023 fiscal year end has been completed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick? Just uh, saying we're going to have a surplus? This is in the case that we have a surplus that it gets transferred to tax stabilization reserve. I think there's a good chance that uh, Councillor Medwin and Deputy Mayor Morio. The tax stabilization reserve, what are the, I guess, reasons in which we can draw from that account? Uh, it is stated in the bylaw. I don't have it right in front of me, but basically it's, it's for Council to stabilize the mill rate on the budget when we do pass the tax bylaw. So we can use that in order to stabilize the mill rate. So if there's an expenditure that we did not see coming in the plans, we can include that, use the tax stabilization reserve to not increase the mill rate. Is there not a reserve set up that if there is a surplus in certain areas, such as recreation, snow removal, things, like that, that they can go specifically into reserves for those purposes? We have a specific amount of reserves and, and the province requires us uh, to, to write bylaws for those reserves with specific uses. So what this does is allow us to be very general on stabilizing the mill rate. So okay, the answer to that is yes, but only in very specific cases. If, if council wanted to, if, if they're saying there is a surplus, and council said let's use the surplus 
a nominal surplus or if they want to use it to dedicate it to something other than the tax stabilization reserve, we can have we have that choice as well. This is just moving, this is getting ahead of that right now. Okay, because I'm just thinking like I don't remember having this discussion as a council as to where we might want to see these funds. So passing this a resolution right now to me says it's defining where we're moving those funds. And so that will be up to council to decide that. Do we maybe want to table this and take it to a cow and discuss if we want to take a portion and or all of it into this account or into other reserves so it might be more readily accessible for other So, needs? So you're making a motion to table? Sure. Okay. Is there a seconder? Okay, so uh, your turn. <clears throat> okay, um, to Councilor Bobbick's question, um, we don't know if there is or is not a surplus, but since this is the last regular meeting of the year, uh, we have to create this resolution to give administration the ability to move that um, to the tax stabilization reserve um, versus if we don't do this uh, and dictate or indicate in this resolution which reserve we put it to, it automatically goes to the nominal surplus uh, where that comes with its own rules and regulations of how much we can withdraw and what the minimum balance is. Um, years ago, the council decided to create this tax stabilization reserve, which is a general reserve that doesn't have any specific project but a place to put the money uh, where council can use it for any specific purpose in through budget process without having to go through the nominal surplus um, reserve with all the rules and regulations that come with uh, the, the act so, um, so, yeah, so basically um, this tax stabilization reserve at the beginning of the year traditionally does not have any funds allocated to it as compared to other reserves that we do have that are set up for specific purposes um, that do have amounts allocated to them in the budget. Um, this one has a zero amount allocated to it and traditionally this is where any surpluses um, at one at the end of one fiscal year is, is put um, that's unrestricted where council has free ability to um, assign it in the following year. Uh, should there uh, be instances where uh, there could be a major uh, rate hike that uh, this could um, be able to offset that in future years. Okay. Uh, Councilor Medwood and Councilor Bobbin. Then I'm still unclear as to, on one hand I'm hearing that the tax stabilization reserve fund is solely for the purpose of reducing the mill rate. And I'm getting the impression from what I'm hearing from Deputy Mayor Morio that it can be used for other purposes. So I'm not clear on what's like, is it specifically only to see if we need to just sent you the, the bylaw in your inbox. So I suggest you you read it and there's there's these very specific lists. Uh, for the use of the tax, stabiliz tax stabilization reserve, which does state for consistent mill rate, for consistent, I guess, tax to our to our residents, and then it can be used the way that it's worded. <coughs> it, it can be used broadly, so it, it's not specific. It's not recreation dependent, focused on recreation or how it works. It's, it is for a consistent. Um, Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, no, thank you, Deputy Mayor. That explains and clears it up for me. So, more of the physical year that comes into play with this than the money. So, I'm sure. thanks for that explanation. Okay. Further discussion? Sir. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 11, 11.1. Resolved bylaw number six, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to maintain property and to regulate nuisances, derelict 
abandoned and unsightly property were read a second time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morial, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, as previously reiterated in previous meetings and stuff like that, this is one of the tools that Council has in its ability to address some of the crime um, issues in our community. Um, so this is where uh, we are looking to uh, put rules and regulations um, in place that do have a matrix where it's not by opinion, it's by a very set rules and guidelines um, that are being followed um, by the bylaw services and administration um, when they evaluate properties that uh, there is complaints that come through it or um, through general patrols through the, the bylaw department uh, to maintain our, our properties and potentially uh, reduce some of the crime issues and unsightly properties that are in the town. Right. Just, just to be very clear, it, it is used for that, but, but this is not the, the exterior aesthetic bylaw. This is the unsightly bylaw that we decided would be separated. So we did add uh, to this one the vegetation uh, overgrowth on sidewalks and intersections, etc. But uh, this is the unsightly bylaw for, for weeds and the smaller property issues that come up. Uh, I did I did remove the first reading of the aesthetics bylaw because the enforcement side was was just not clear yet. So uh, it will likely require a change to the enforcement bylaw. The first reading of that bylaw will happen at our, our next meeting. Councilor Medwood. A couple questions, and you may have just answered one of them. In your report, um, with this agenda item, it references the evaluation matrix will receive its bylaw for first reading on December 19th, which I did not see, and I, you just mentioned you removed a portion of our agenda, so that might be tied into there. So my question for what is on the agenda is, do we have the means and by means, I'm referring to staff, budget, and resources to fully enforce all aspects of what is presented to us today of this bylaw as it is currently written. Yes, definitely. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. All right, looks like uh, there's nothing else in between here. 12, 13, 14, or 15. So we'll go to members' privilege, and I'll start with uh, Councilor Medwood. Member um, privilege, well, um, what's there to say? Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, because that will be occurring before our next meeting as well. Um, honestly, I've been so busy. Um, just finished my last craft show for the season, and I'm not sure where to begin with my time. Um, but I have a lot to do, and I keep forgetting half the stuff I need to do. So, if uh, you know of any meetings coming up, <laughs> be sure to remind me in case I've forgotten. But I do know to be here tomorrow at 3:15. Uh, I will be at the co-op uh, tomorrow morning as well as Saturday, selling uh, Super Bowl tickets for the Bozeman Lions. So, if you're in your co-op, feel free to stop by and. Uh, Make a purchase. Uh, okay. Council White. A couple of, I, I realize you guys are working on it, but I'm willing to take the job of trying to make it happen. I've talked about it for about six months now, and maybe going out to our, a couple of our First Nation partners, talk louder, and uh, Whiskey and Sapatoyak, and simply liaise and go up for dinner. Say, hey, we want to come for dinner. We want to talk about economic development together. The arena slips into my mind. I know they have a gift presentation planned. We've had the gift for six months. I don't know if we bought one for a risk reciprocate. So we keep talking about this, and I keep thinking, let's make it happen. And if you'd like to download that onto me, I, I could certainly talk to the chiefs and say, when can we come and the nudge? So I throw that out at you. Our street names, uh, Mr. Walker and Mr. McKenzie, I know the streets haven't been approved or whatever the words are, they've been designed. I think we can still do the presentation, show their names, with the signs in their hands, because people are disappearing, they're dying, unfortunately, and uh, I think 
we should make, do that sooner than later. Why should we wait? Because we're going to name the street after them. We've approved to name the street after them. I feel like I'm in an echo chamber. I got these, whatever. So I, I would encourage us to think seriously about that. Uh, the Crown Attorneys, I think we should also have a meeting with the Crown Attorneys again, the senior Crown. I forgot his name, I have it written nearby. And or the Mayor, well both, the Mayor of Dauphin and sit down with, with the Crowns, say, hey, we've got a problem. And I somehow, I don't think they realize how significant it is. I think if some of our, our Crowns went with them, they would listen better. And the Mayor, uh, Mr. Bozak, most of you know, would be more than willing to sit with us and say, how are they solving? You can invite them up here, I don't care what order it is. And uh, obviously the loss of reactants was something that hurts our whole community and uh, hurt for them all. And the reason I'm thinking of the signs is you know, we got to get a vote on that kind of stuff because it's really too big. And thank you, uh, Councilor, for reminding us to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Uh, that's all good stuff. Thank you. Councilor Powell. Well, Merry Christmas to everybody. And whatever has a safe and happy holiday. Um, I, guess, I guess with that saying that, um, I know that through the Elbridge Arthur Friendship Center. They have quite a few things going on through Christmas, um, so you can check out their website. But I also know Aaron has got quite a few things going on for the 23rd, I believe, right? And you can check that out on their website as well. So, so there'll be lots happening at the arena for the Christmas break. Um, yeah, you know, um, I think everybody's mentioned um, Ray Atkinson. Ray Atkinson is an amazing man, an amazing person to this community who, uh, um, Definitely, knew, everybody knew who Ray was, and he supported everything that possibly went on in this community. So uh, he will be terribly missed. Um, saying that, I'd also like to mention um, uh, Jason Eisner and his um, his group of uh, with this the present. I, I can't remember what he calls it. Stash and, and uh, stash and grab. Stash and grab. Well, it's definitely. I am telling you, it has brought this community out at night mm -hmm. and just looking for presents. I can't believe the amount of vehicles that we saw flying by. Like yes, yesterday evening, like there's just there's vehicles everywhere, and it just looked like the city for God's sakes. You know what I mean? But so congratulations to him and his family for putting that on, and and, and uh, respects to his wife and his past wife. Um, there, it's great, and it's great for our community that we've got that together. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Mario. Um, yeah, so Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of the uh, administration, staff, the rest of the council, and to our repairs. Um, since we won't be meeting until then, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, and yeah, this will be one of the I guess the, the first holiday season that I will be staying in community, not working EMS um, somewhere in the province. So, but that doesn't mean my dull life doesn't continue on, that I'll continue working. So keep watching your emails because I'll be delegating some tasks to all you guys through all that free time you have in the holiday for the projects that I'm working on. <laughs> so stay tuned. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. It's quite the morning. <coughs> You're number one on the list. Cap comes and counts from the job. Hi, I guess just reiterating Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. So previously, um, I do, I'm pretty excited to have Dominga Campana here. I, I actually have a project I want to speak to you about by at the end of the day here. So uh, we're going to involve the high school hopefully uh, with this. So it's perfect that you're here today. Thank you. Uh, just in passing bylaws here about on site with properties, just want to mention a bit, and, and this would be just my personal opinion, but I think we need to clean a few of the weeds up around our own town office here. You drive by, it looks like a few thistles and stuff around here. Also, I have a concern with the way you watch the public come into this place. They all sneak across our stone pile there that could get pretty treacherous. I think we should have to look at something next summer to uh, either get rid of the stones or rectify that because I don't think it's actually working. So just something to put on the plate. Just a couple things before June, January 9th, if I could get uh, somewhere where we are with the recycling contract, I'd be greatly appreciated. I would like to see the cost from the landfill and the cemetery for 22 and 23. And I was talking to you about a cost per meter on the water job we did straight uh, north of Highway 83. I know you got a lot on your plate. I'm not a hurry, but I would like to keep that to do some comparisons. 
The watershed uh, will be having the elections in uh, January here, so I'm letting my name stand as chair if the California Council wants to keep me on the board, so you'll be getting a letter to that effect here shortly. So up to you, I guess. So just with uh, Council White's comment on the signs of the, to be put up and stuff, this was on my notes here before. And speaking of Ray Atkinson and what, what he's done for the community and all the children, there should be a street, I think, personally, if we should have a thought about naming a street after this traffic. So he's done a lot for all the community over the years. He knew every child in the valley, so I mean, it's something to think about. I don't know if council would want to go in that direction, but this is an idea what I'm throwing out there. So maybe keep that in mind if somebody has a name that we could put up somewhere for an honor of him and his family, that would be greatly appreciated. I would know. So with that, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, be safe. Thank you. Uh, for myself, um, uh, just the beginning of, or I guess of last week, that I had a meeting with Chief Janai from Sapatoya Cree Nation. Uh, we did speak a little bit on, on that presentation. He's very aware of it. He wants to save it to be done all at the same time. And, and that's, he, he has not changed that message to me at all since all the time that I've had sat and chatted with him. We had a good talk about uh, crime in, in the community and, uh, and, and how possibly they could help. I know that uh, Councillor Bob and Dylan has, has expressed the same thing to me as well. Um, we talked about their new business venture that they're working on right now. Uh, can't reveal that, but uh, they have some couple different ideas which they're going to be taking back to the community. So they do have some property uh, in around the West Woodian area that they had recently purchased so that we're, they are looking at maybe after this agreement as everything is all dealt with that they will have something to announce to the community in, in the new year. Um, we did talk a little bit about their uh, main water break that they had. They actually had a major water break at Sapatoyak and they didn't have the uh, the resource, the hardware, I guess, to do the repair. So our public works people from the utility helped to get them the right uh, product and get them back up and running again. So I think Paul had a lot to do with that. So thank him for uh, meeting up with their staff uh, for uh, arranging that and, uh, and getting them back up and running. Um, uh, speaking of Bob and Dylan, he and his family have just recently purchased Why Not Johnny's uh, old uh, building, so in the new year he'll be starting a new venture here in the town as well. And I guess other than that, you know, I want to thank all our staff uh, throughout the whole entire year, especially our frontline people that work for the town, um, the people that are in the trenches. And when I was talking to the chief about guys working in the ground when it was cold and dealing with all the water and all that. It just couldn't have helped imagine our people that do the same thing too. And it's not the greatest job. And I know, I think we talked about that and said, hey, you know what, maybe we should go out and see these guys and tour it sometime to see exactly what they go through. So thank to them and, and to our garbage operators and arena recreation, everybody that uh, does a wonderful job uh, to our community, uh, our staff in the office here, directors, our CEO, our CFO, Ganita, our new fire department that we have within the Swan Valley West, and to all of you that sit around this table here for the past year, and I'm looking forward to the new year as well, as working as much as we are on many issues that uh, affect our community, and uh, things will, things will be, things are going to get better, I, I feel bad that way, and, and uh, we'll just keep on working on things together, so. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to all of you as well. And with that, oh, I guess I should, I almost forgot. Um, Director Clausen, your privilege. Um, nothing extra for me, just Merry Christmas. Okay. Mr. Harvey? Uh, I just want to thank the public work staff for all the hard work they've done. Like I say, a lot of the jobs in the cold and the water breaks were really working. shot and to come back and have a cold filled with water. So appreciate that. And definitely want to thank Jordan for all the hard work he's done, all the planning and 
lots of times whenever you guys are thanking public works, so that's directly attributable to Jordan. And uh, I attended the Christmas concert at the ESRSS, and they did a really good job. The teachers, it always impresses me how they can get that many kids to line up and sing a song. And I have one kid, and sometimes pull my hair. So very impressive. And then I was talking to the ski hill manager there, and we're just hoping for a few more inches of snow so we can test out that new lodge. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, CFO Ganita. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and I hope people still be around between Christmas and New Year's to sign <laughs> checks, approve payments. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll just, be here. <laughs> just, just don't be working all the days. Make sure you take a few days off, too. Thank you. Uh, CEO Poole. Uh, I just want to thank His Worship for acknowledging the staff and the hard work they do. And I, and I think an honorable mention needs to go to uh, Chief Dorchuk for his many years with the town. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think we're going to schedule something in the new year for him. We'll, we'll still be working with him, obviously. But uh, yeah, big thanks to Chief Dorchuk and everything he's done for the town of Okay. Mm -hmm. And Youth Councillor Tapama, anything from you? Well, um, of course, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I feel like every time I repeat those words, I am just surprised by how quickly the year can escape us. Um, just last year, I remember, I remember working uh, midnight on New Year's, and and then I blinked, and now I'm here, and uh, <laughs> I'm starting a whole new venture with you guys, with the town council, and I'm very excited for it. Um, I'm fascinated by it, if I, even if I don't fully understand it all the time, um, but I'm definitely willing and excited to learn more about, about it. Um, I was interested by that point you made um, uh, about why not Johnny's being sold, because I know that a lot of high school students like to park there, uh, especially now that the parking is very like uh, limited because of the construction there. So just out of curiosity, do you know when the restaurant's going to be up and running again? He, all he told me is he hopes to be around March the 1st, but he, he's fully aware of the students that park in and around his restaurant. Yes. And his words were to me was, they can keep on parking there. Oh, okay. Well, that'll be good. Cause, um, but I'm not his official spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> With the new toll board. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, that's good to hear because uh, I know that the teachers like to menace the students of how whenever the, that restaurant gets sold, we're all going to have to go back into the assigned student parking. But, uh, well, that's neither here nor there. I'm, I'm just glad to be here, and uh, that's about all I have to say. Perfect. I did hear he's looking to do some exterior renovations, so mm -hmm. that may impact student parking because those crews are going to need to get their trucks and equipment into that area. So. Yeah, I bet it would. For in the new year, there might need to be some new parking <laughs> considerations. Yeah. Special privilege to Jeremy at the end. All right. Thank you. Result of this regular meeting, the council now be adjourned at 8.13 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.